In this question, we're asked to calculate the percent change in load factors for each year, 2008, 2009, 2010, and the average annual rate of change, given some data. Let's set up a timeline to visualize the problem. From 2008 to 2009 to 2010. The data we're given are available air miles and purchased air miles, so let's add that in. In 2008, there were 13.731 billion air miles sold or purchased um, and 17.139 billion air miles available. In 2009, there were 13.835 billion air miles sold and 17.558 billion air miles available. And I've added in the air mile data for 2010. Load factor is the ratio of these two numbers as a percent. So in 2008, the load factor would be 13.731 billion divided by the 17.139 billion available miles. And we want to make a percentage of that. So we multiply by 100%. So the billions will cancel. And when we divide that and multiply by 100, we end up with 80.1155. 2599%, and we'll keep all the decimals for now. Using the same method, the load factor for 2009 works out to be 78.79599043%. And the load factor for 2010 is 79.92321474%. First, we're asked to calculate the percent change in the load factors for each year. And what we have is two time intervals. So this would be year number one, and this would be year number two. OK, so our percent change for the first time interval is going to be the final value in the first time interval minus the initial value in the first time interval divided by the initial value in the first time interval times 100%. The 80 and change percent is our initial value in the first time interval, and the 78 and change percent is our final value in the first time interval. So let's plug those values in and work out the percent change. So our final value, time interval 1, minus our initial value, time interval 1, divided by the initial value, times 100%, gives us a percent change of negative 1.64704099%. Notice it's negative because the load factor has declined. Also notice that the percents here, here, and here cancel out, but we're left with this percentage. Now the question asks us to round our answers to four decimal places. So we look at this, there's the fourth decimal place. We look to the digit to the right, it's not five or bigger, so we're actually going to cut it off right here. So our answer will be negative 1.6470%. Notice we keep the trailing zero because we want four decimal accuracy. All right, let's now figure out the percent change for time interval 2, which would be the final value, time interval 2, minus the initial value, time interval 2, divided by the initial value, times 100%. What we notice is our 78 and change uh, load factor now becomes the initial value for time interval 2, and the 79.9, uh, etc. becomes the final value for time interval 2. Plugging the values into our equation, we end up with the percent change for time interval 2 of 1.430560494%. Now we want 4 decimal places, so what we can do is we look at the fourth decimal digit here, the 5. We look to the digit to the right, the 6 is 5 or bigger, so we're going to bump this one up. So what we'll do is we'll go to here, we'll change the 5 into a 6, and we've got our 4 decimal accuracy. 
Notice in our second time interval from 2009 to 2010, the load factor went up, so our percent change is positive in this case. Okay, almost there. Last thing they want us to do is figure out the average annual rate of change. In other words, what single rate would get us from this load factor to this load factor over these two time intervals? Okay, let me make some space here to answer the question. All right, I've moved our 2008 load factor up here, and that will be our initial value, and our 2010 load factor here, and that'll be our final value. I've also kept our answers for the first part of the questions here, so we have them. So our formula to work out the average annual rate of change would be the final value equal to the initial value times 1 plus r, the annual rate of change, to the power n, which is the number of, of time intervals. All right, let's plug in our values. Our final value is 79.92321474. We'll keep all the decimal digits for accuracy at this stage. Initial value is 80.11552599. Uh, these are percents. And 1 plus r, the annual rate is what we're trying to find. We're trying to find r, and n is there's two time intervals here, so n is 2. We want to isolate r, so the first thing to do is let's get rid of the 80 and change percent. To do that, we'll divide by that on both sides. Okay, so these two cancel, and the percents cancel, and we divide these two numbers. We end up with 0.9975995 is equal to 1 plus r to the power 2, or squared. Okay, next thing we want to do is get rid of the uh, power 2, or exponent 2. So we can take the square root of both sides, that's one way to do it, or we could raise each side to the power of 1 half. It's the same thing. So I could take this and raise it to the power of a half, Whatever I do to one side, i got to do to the other. Raise that to the power of a half. And just to remember, for laws of exponents, when you take the power of a power, what you're doing is you multiply those exponents. So you go 2 times 1 half, which equals 1, and that eliminates, in effect, the exponent. So on the right side, we'll just have 1 plus r to the power 1, which is just 1 plus r. On the left side, you can use your y to the x button on your calculator. Type in this number, y to the x to the 0.5, because half is 0.5. And when you do that, we'll end up with 0 0.9987990066. And anything to the exponent 1 is just itself, so we can just actually eliminate that. And we would end up just with 1 plus r on that side. Next, we want to isolate r, so we want to get rid of the 1, so we subtract 1 from both sides. So take 1 away there, take 1 away there, and we'll end up with negative decimal 0, 0, 1, 2, 0, 0, 0.0012, 3, 3 on this side, and r on this side. Finally, we want to make r a percent, so we multiply by 100%, which means move the decimal over one, two places to the right. And if we do that, we'll end up with negative decimal 1200933% is r. And we want four decimal place accuracy, so we look to our four decimal places here, the zero. So we're going to have to bump that up by one because the digit to the right, nine, is bigger than five. So our final answer becomes negative, and I'll put a zero in here in front of the decimal, negative 0.1201% is our annual rate of change. Notice again that our annual rate of change is negative because from the beginning in 2008 to the end in 2010, the load factor went down overall. All right, so let's just make sure we answered the questions. Calculate the percent change in load factors for each year. So for first time interval, 2008 to 2009, the, that's the percent change. Uh, for the second time interval, for 2009 to 2010, that's the percent change. And the average rate of change, annual rate of change, has also been calculated. There you go. Thanks for watching.